we are now working directly with a BIM 360 model inside of Estimator. So we have the ability to browse and open models in BIM 360. We also have the ability to view and interact and filter those models directly inside of Estimator. So what that can look like is I've created this, this group here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean this up a little bit. So one way that you can look at your model is by level, right? So I'm breaking this down by item name. You'll notice this is highlighting. One of the things I can do is edit some settings maybe to make this a little bit easier to see online. So I'm going to turn off the ghosting of hidden objects so it just shows uh, the objects I've selected. And for those of you who've never seen Estimator before, you get a feel for how the filter view works. So it's filtering the model. It's also filtering the estimate in real time as well, although I haven't currently applied any cost to this model. Uh, but you kind of get an idea for how this works. So I can look at it by level and break it down by type. I can come into here and I can flip this and say first break it down by type and then we'll look at it by level. So in this case, I say show me all the columns, right? And I could break that down by level if I'd like. One of the other cool things that we've done both for Navisworks and for BIM 360 is implemented the ability to select an object, right click and say select everything similar to this object. So this is the type of functionality that's often been requested by a lot of the forward thinking companies who are already embracing 3D quantity takeoff that makes your life a heck of a lot easier is you find an object in the model and you can say, hey, give me everything like this. Now that I've selected my columns, I'm just gonna go through and add some costing to these columns. Uh, so here I'm going to say I'm going to add a cost. I'm going to say let's go ahead and find columns. Let's see. That's quite a bit. Let's do this. I'm going to go to something a little bit more simplified for this. All right. There we go. And I'm going to tie a 24 by 24 inch column uh, line item to these columns. And just like we've seen before, if you're an existing user of our products, that's all done through drag and drop. So here, this particular line item is measured in vertical linear feet. I'm just going to grab the total length of column that I've selected above um, into my quantity field and hit OK. So I've now mapped that line item to all of these columns which will mean that if at any time these columns grow, shrink, or disappear, that quantity will update. And I'll go into exactly how that looks and feels um, here in a second. Maybe I'll go ahead as well and put some cost on our floors. So I'm going to select a filter for floors. Select our ground slab. Maybe we'll put a, a slab on grade assembly here. And we'll map the area. And then, of course, you're not just limited to one property. You can map as many as you want. Um, so I'll map that and answer a handful of questions while I'm here about the type of concrete we're going to use, so 4,000 PSI concrete. Um, it wants the thickness of the slab in inches, but this guy's measured the feet. So we'll go ahead and change it to inches here so that everything lines up. So now we've got a mapping that uses the right unit. We're going to make this pump concrete. Everything you're seeing here is 100% customizable. So um, this is just an example of walking through an assembly inside of our application. Um, but these questions, the how, how it looks and feels and the interaction is all 100% customizable. And this is something that the guys in our implementation team can help work with you to create. All right, I'm happy with that. So now I've priced my ground slab. Here what I want to do is come back. I'm going to select this slab, say get everything similar, noticing that it picked that ground slab too. I'm going to go ahead and just unselect that piece. And let's throw in an elevated deck assembly for these remaining slabs here. All right, let's price that by area. Uh, I'm not going to mess with the rest of the stuff. A lot of these questions are asking about additional structure like beams and columns, but we've already priced our columns separately, so I'm going to leave that unpriced in this assembly. And then maybe lastly, we'll look at some walls. So I'm going to pick the wall, get everything similar. Um, I could just hit Control A and select everything visible. Uh, but in this case, I only wanted to get everything similar to this particular wall. All right, so this is a metal panel. And we'll just associate a metal panel item with that. This guy's measured in square feet, so we'll do it by the area. 
And that should be enough uh, to kind of get the idea for how it looks to apply cost and interacting with the model. Now, there's a couple of things we can do here. Uh, we can do things like deconstruct a model by only looking at what's mapped. So we do have a property called is mapped. I can bring this up. Say, hey, everything that's mapped to a cost, show me that. Okay, this is everything in the model currently mapped to a cost. Everything that's not mapped, show me that. And so now, if I were just to leave this selected and to continue to select items, um, find all similar, uh, come through and say, okay, I'm going to add a line item. This is going to be maybe a say precast, you know, basic wall, something like that. Tie that to cost. We'll do that to square feet as well. As soon as I add this, you're going to notice they go away. They disappear. And so you can actually deconstruct a model by adding cost to it until there's nothing left. It's a, as kind of a nice handy way to figure out what you have and you haven't take off, taken off yet. All right, so the last major piece that I wanted to show you guys that we have implemented as well is the ability to compare models inside of BIM 360. Now, for some of you uh, who are savvy BIM 360 users, you say, well, hey, I've, I've already seen the ability to compare models in BIM 360. Um, but this is not quite the same, although we have taken a significant amount of steps to make it look the same. Uh, there is no way inside of BIM 360 to get at any of that information for comparison. Um, and as a matter of fact, the information that you would need isn't really available anyway um, when working through comparisons like that. So we have re-implemented that comparison directly inside of our application, but maintain a focus on keeping that look and feel as best as possible. So if I wanted to update this, the way that I would do that, I'd come into here to my update window. Here I, it allows me to compare as many different models as I'd like. Um, against my current baseline, so I'm going to say compare against. It would bring up your uh, your BIM360 buckets. You'd navigate through, find the one you want to update. In this case, it'd be this version two here, and you'd select it. Now that takes about 90 seconds for this particular model because it loads up both versions and then does a full comparison. In an effort to save time, I've already pulled it up here. So this is what would happen 90 seconds later. Just like in our other applications, so just like in our implementation for Navisworks, when you have that comparison between two models, we show you what's been added, modified, and removed. Uh, and just like with Navisworks, it is also fully integrated with our filter view. So that as you filter, this will also change. So this to the right being, you know, hey, the number of objects that are added, modified, or removed for what you've got selected and visible currently. Uh, we've also added a handful of other nifty features. Uh, probably the most importantly, the ability to see the affected cost. So I'm going to just bring this up for a second. You can see here's the items that I priced, um, and then I could, and you can even see the variance. So anything that was affected um, by the update. In this case, there wasn't a whole lot of effect in that update, but we we did have some columns that looked like they were affected quite a bit. Uh, outside of that, the floors um, look like they may have grown just a hair, so we've got an additional concrete and labor that went into, that will go into handling that. One of the other things that we've done inside of this comparison, of course, you know, being able to turn off um, anything that's been added, modified, or removed and really focus on any particular piece is there. Um, we've also given you the ability uh, irrespective of what's been added, modified, or moved, you have the ability as well to show only those objects that have been changed that I applied costing to. So here, if I click this little button off to the side, that enables us to see only those objects that are that will affect our estimate that were involved in this modification. Now, not everything that you see here had a price that was affected. So most of this, as you, you can see from this count object over here to the right, are things like property changes. In this case, um, the Revit file may have been moved a couple times and there was some paths that were stored with these objects and those paths are different. So we don't really care about that. I'm going to turn that off. And that will really filter down now to objects that were either transformed, which means they moved from one place to the other, or they actually changed in shape. So this is something where they were modified in size. So here I can come in and say, well, outside of transform, let's just focus on the stuff that's modified in size. 
and I can select on any one of these objects and see exactly what was modified. So I can have a, a very thorough presentation of what's changed. Um, I can filter down to exactly only those types of changes that I care about. Um, just like in the comparisons that you've seen inside of A360, you can look at that as a flat list, you can look at that as a tree. Um, so that's a lot of that's compliments to our friends at Autodesk for working so closely with our development teams. And this enables you to, before the estimate is affected, just like in our uh, Navisworks implementation, you can figure out, am I okay with that update or do I want to keep it the way it was? And that's all handled here. So you can either update the price, unhook it, or completely throw it out. And this is one of the things that we really, really, really want to keep a focus on inside of Estimator is giving the estimator the ability to have comfort for what is being impacted when a new drawing set's uh, been delivered, when a new model's been delivered. They can look through these changes. They can figure out what's been added, modified, or removed. They can see the impact on their estimate. And before it impacts their estimate, they can choose what they want to do about it. Uh, once you get this the way you like it, whether you want to unhook some of these or remove them completely or just keep them to where they're going to update, uh, the estimator simply has to hit accept update. And as soon as they hit accept update, this model, that was the new model, now becomes the current model and the estimate. And the estimate is now associated with this model specifically, and it will be driving quantities until there's some new update and we can bring it into the update mechanism. <clears throat> 